Well, hello Auburn, Alabama, and all points around the globe where War Eagle can be heard in return with joy, particularly right here on the corner of South Donahue, War Eagle Way. As you can see over my left shoulder, left shoulder, Jordan-Hare Stadium in the background. It is a beautiful day here on the rolling hills and plains of Auburn, Alabama. And when I say beautiful day, I mean beautiful day. I have been to games for four decades in every month of the season, August, September, October, November, even bowl games, December and January. And this is about as pleasant as it gets, unless you get one of those mid-October days where it's particularly mild and you actually get a home game scheduled in October which there seems to have been a paucity of recently uh, but as I said I've been talking about the weather for about this the forecast for this particular game the kickoff of, of a new era game uh, week one game day War Eagle the kickoff of a new and great era for Auburn football. So it is a beautiful afternoon here and there's a little breeze in just from the southeast it looks like. A little gentle breeze rustling flags and I hope that this message finds you truly well and joyful and that you are delighting in the festivities of game day wherever you are. I hope you're here. But not everybody can be here. The Auburn family is scattered far and wide. And uh, if you are not here, hope you're watching a little TV on television, maybe do participating in a little long distance tailgate. If you are here, come on by and see me. You can find me. I'm right here. I'm live. We got lots of people walking down. It is 2.03, 14.03 p.m. the central time zone right here. And uh, so we got Tiger Walk coming up in a little bit less than two hours. And I think, what time is Tiger Walk, right? Um, it's two hours before game time, folks. Every day, every Saturday, every home game, forever and ever. Amen. Anyway, ongoing joke. Uh, to, uh, game day, uh, Tiger Walk is in a little less than two hours, so I'll be heading down there. May or may not do a little something from down there, but I uh, did a little pondering uh, on the last podcast episode about wondering. I didn't know what they were going to do with Tiger Walk. I wasn't able to come. Well, I didn't want to come last year. I didn't want to come and wear a mask and sit in a stadium with 18,000 people instead of 88,000 people and still pay premium prices for that actually more than premium because of the limited tickets available so I didn't get over here and plus it's a little bit of a hike it's five hours for us from the low country of South Carolina where I hear it's also nice today too as well but anyway so uh, I, I didn't know what they did for Tiger Walk last year and I think that from what I heard on one of the other podcasts I believe they said that they just pulled the buses up right next to the stadium and maybe kept the crowd back. I'm not even sure about the veracity of that claim. But it looks to me, I went and uh, did a recon and walked by there, and it looks to me as though uh, they widened the barriers, as we thought would be a pretty good idea. But it looks to me as though they're going to do Tiger Walk as, as sort of normal. It looks to me like they've got the barriers in the street, got everything roped and barred off, and they got them down just about, just about to the uh, um, wellness kitchen. Not quite, actually, just short of the wellness kitchen. So um, they'll probably pull the buses up. I'm guessing right down to that point, and then the players will come out, and hopefully, everybody will understand um, the uh, common sense of contact and proximity and not get too uh, spun up if players aren't given fives, which they shouldn't be, let's be honest. I mean, we don't need to be uh, mask Nazis and vaccination fascists, but um, 
take care of yourself, do the right thing, and uh, all will be well. But you also have to understand reality and that there is this uh, <clears throat> quasi-flu going around, so I've heard. But anyway, enough about that. So, I have been spending my early tailgate time just taking in the sights and sounds, enjoying the feel of game day, because it's been since the Ole Miss game of 19. So it's been, what was that, November? Late October, uh, I think that was November. Um, late October, maybe it was late October. That game is usually around Halloween, but anyway, that was the famous game where all the girls, because that was our first that we didn't have a home game. Oh, that's right. We didn't have a home single home game in the month of October, which is absurd beyond measure. So the girls all wore their uh, summer best because they hadn't been able to dress up since September when it was 100 degrees. And they all froze to death sitting on metal benches. Imagine that. You got a phone, but you can't check your weather app. So anyway, it's been since then. Not since I've been to campus or uh, been to a basketball game or two since then and been in town and in campus a few times here and there since then, but haven't been to a football game day since, I guess that was early November of 2019. So I've been using this tailgate time to enjoy soak in the vibe that I missed so terribly and uh, get ready to get everything spun up and just have a good time going in that stadium behind me. Uh, I've also been watching the Penn State game with interest. I haven't, uh, I turned it off at halftime and went on a little bit of a walk so I haven't seen it since then but that first half um, understanding that it's everybody's first game of the season, everybody's working out kinks, and that they are working out kinks against a, uh, let's just say, a worthy opponent. Um, Wisconsin is always strong. Their defense looks good, as usual, but Penn State does not look uh, formidable. They look like they got a pretty decent defense, but they don't like look anything special on offense. So what I'd like to see in a couple of weeks from now is for everybody to chill out on the uh, on the the whiteout road game hundred thousand Happy Valley hype because here's the deal, folks. These guys that are going to play today in navy blue, they play in front of eighty eight thousand people at home and on the road. Well, they go and play in front of upwards of what one hundred and ten thousand people. College Station, Tuscaloosa, Athens. This, the road, uh, Gainesville. That that Gainesville crowd. That's a whole different thing. Um, vile, vile saltwater white trash. Uh, and that is that stadium was built to funnel noise down onto the field. That is a that's a scary place. And it's not that that the crowd, the size of the crowd, or the noise is, uh, the, the potential, the perception of the noise is scary to these guys. It's that you physically can't hear and your freaking ears are bleeding in that stadium. Uh, so can't communicate on offense. But anyway, so let, let's dispense with the nonsense about the scary white out Happy Valley 100,000 crowd and uh, go up there and take care of business because it looks to me at this point having not seen our guys yet, um, but I trust in the competence and coherence as I've been preaching since December of uh, this crew, this coaching staff, and how they're connecting that message and that philosophy to these players. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But uh, yeah, Penn State, I don't know. Um, everywhere, it's college football is not the NFL. It's not sanitized every team is within one degree of one another you know these are still young men can we stop calling them kids that drives me insane uh, these young men from 18 to 22 ish they're still young men 
and having been a former young man, we, we can be stupid at times. We can lose our minds for no reason. Uh, but discipline and a coherent plan, uh, trusting should win the day. Looking forward to that. Uh, as far as today, um, you know, if you're paying attention to the uh, to the to the podcast and vidcast uh, and the media crowd and platforms, then it's basically this: score predictions, uh, defensive performance, offensive performance. I don't know. Does any of that matter? Yeah, a lot. Most of it matters on some level, as far as how you relate it to the overall scheme of what you're trying to do. So does it matter if the offense is a little sputtery, but still they still win by four touchdowns? Yeah, you don't want to see that. You want to see them focused and disciplined coming out of the gate strong. It matters. It doesn't not matter, right? And the defense. Are they going to pitch a shutout? It's really hard to it's really hard to shut out a team, especially when you have the potential of this particular team, this particular game being so well in hand so early on that you're going to start putting in, you're going to play everyone, and anything could happen at the end of the game. Akron's coming down; those guys are playing. They're going to play in this. Uh, you know, I think that they probably play Ohio State and some other big games like that up where they're in their neck of the woods. So they've seen this before, but you know, they're going to come down and they're, they're not going to want to get shut out. They're not going to want to get embarrassed. And when you're playing against uh, guys that aren't really on the depth chart on defense that are getting reps, then you never know. And conversely, if you got the fourth string offense in and somebody, uh, fumbles a handoff exchange then and they get the ball deep in the territory so things like that if something like that prevents a shutout boy we really shouldn't be upset about that but if they score early on us yeah you don't really want to see that so score prediction shutouts who knows I don't know who cares um, I'd say you can probably look for it to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 45-6, 45-10, something like that. Rooting for the shutout, though. Uh, what else we got going on? There are, I have some notes over there on the iPad, but I'm not going to look at them. Is, uh, I don't intend for this to be a, uh, an entire... Um, podcast episode just a little fun video clip I told you guys in the last episode before I uh, made my way to the rolling hills and plains of Auburn Alabama that um, I'd try to use all of my media tools available and so I thought I'd jump on here for you with you guys before I head down um, for the pregame festivities and uh, enjoying the music in the background um, what was I talking about Oh, uh, something interesting about today is that I counted before uh, when I was doing my research a couple of days ago when I was thinking about this. I'm going to do probably a fuller breakdown of this on the next podcast, full podcast episode. But there are, by my count, 19 guys who are going to play today in the two deep that we've either never seen before they're freshmen or they're transfers um, or they just didn't play they were on the practice squad or they were so deep in the depth chart and you know how the last guy that coached here felt about <sighs> putting in guys when games were well in hand you got your first string uh, your first team out there on both sides of the ball until there's two minutes left in a game that you're winning by 48 points I don't think we're gonna ever see that again Please, dear God, I don't ever want to see that again. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I think I counted 19 guys that we've either never seen before because they're freshmen, true freshmen, or they were redshirted, or they're transfers, or they just got ghosted under the last guy, or they just really didn't have significant 
playing time or impact. Like you got dudes like Elijah Canyon, who actually I think is listed third uh, in that wide receiver slot. But we saw him in the uh, bowl game last year, but not much other than that for the uh, for any of the rest of that season. And uh, new guys all over the place on the defense, guys that we never seen before. Um, about. So on the offensive side of the ball, you've got really the, the steady mainstays that we saw last year were the offensive linemen, which is a good thing, right? I'm the one that keeps saying to me and maybe one or two other people keep saying, I think this offensive line is going to end up being better than everybody thinks it is. Uh, but guys that we saw steadily, uh, consistently last year, the offensive linemen, the quarterback, uh, the running backs, and maybe Shed Jackson and John Samuel, Luke Deal maybe a little bit. So the offense has a few more, but still guys on the outside farther away from the ball that didn't get much, much if any playing time last year. So this will be interesting and it'll be fun. And by the way, yeah, the, the, um, the name of that episode is gonna be, who the bleep is that guy? Cause I'm gonna have to get a program when I go in there. Um, to figure out with a roster to figure out who the hell is who, which will be fun. Um, God, every year used to be, you know, Tracy Rocker was 74, right? Um, guys were around for a while and they didn't change numbers. Now it seems like everybody changes numbers every year and you got guys on both sides of the ball wearing numbers. What's up, brother? And, uh, It's hard to keep track of these dudes, plus with all the new guys and everything we got going on. So, that'll be fun trying to keep track of who's on the field and doing what. And uh, I'm going to try to enjoy the game rather than just being a member of the media, and which I'm not, an ersatz member of the media. So I'm going to try to enjoy the game and not sit there and take notes. But I do need to relay some information to you guys when we get back to the podcast uh, on... Sunday night or Monday, probably Monday, when I'll be recording the new podcast. So, other thoughts from this game? I don't know. I'm very glad for the 6 o'clock kickoff. Um, the sun will be going down shortly after kickoff, about an hour-ish. And it's going to be a beautiful evening here, as I said, bestowed a gift from God here on the rolling hills and plains of Auburn, Alabama with a September 4th game where it's not 100,000 degrees. So I want you guys to uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Hopefully, if you're not here, hopefully you can find this game somewhere. I guess it's on ESPN Plus, the app. ESP, ESPN Nueve or something like that. But find the game, listen to, just forget all that crap and listen to, I almost said Rod, um, listen to Andy and Stan, because I will be as well uh, whilst in the stadium. Because um, that's part of the game day experience. So I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you for joining me here at the Auburn Stuff Tailgate Live here with Jordan Harris Stadium over my left shoulder. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. And Joe, oh, yeah. And we supposedly hope maybe I'll do a hit at halftime because remember, we got new uh, cell tower thingies. And I, I saw them up there attached to the top of the stadium next to the light poles and all that. So maybe we'll actually be able to get a signal in there for the first time ever. And uh, we'll do a little halftime report. So keep your eyes open for that if you're so inclined. Otherwise, enjoy this glorious Saturday afternoon. Glorious in so many ways, the least of which is not that the weather is beautiful, you're alive, and it's Auburn football back. And so glad to see everybody walking around not wearing masks, uh, watching the football game on TV earlier I was watching coaches on the sideline not wearing masks, a fit, the referees not wearing masks. It's just delightful. You can't shove people into, into controlled behavior 
for too long without people pushing back. So it's very nice to see life being lived. How about that? And on that note, I can't see my camera, so I'm going to take my shades off. On that note, thanks for uh, joining me, those of you guys who joined in, Kathleen, and I'm old, so i got to put on my glasses to see this. E-H-G-G-Z-Z -G -Z eggs. Thanks. For Say hi, guys. War Eagle. War Eagle. There goes the band. How fun is that? So that was cool that I stayed on long enough to get them. I am going to get on out of here, enjoy the rest of my afternoon, and I may or may not see you at halftime. I'm going to give it a shot, and if not, then maybe I'll see you up at Tumors. Either way, you guys enjoy this amazing uh, Saturday afternoon and uh, rejoice and be glad in it, right? Peace out, homies. I'll see y'all. War Eagle.